December 1998, Lindsay Kwai vanishes on Christmas Day. A police missing persons inquiry fails and a family is torn apart. But a visitor from beyond the grave appears to a psychic in a nightmarish vision. She told me she'd been carnaged and mangled. She was trying to tell us that she'd been brutally murdered. Then she flashed the railway line. I could see, I could see the railway track. And I feel is that's where she was telling me is this is where she had been killed. And it was for me to go and help him. Is Lindsay missing or is she dead? And can a psychic discover the truth behind her disappearance? Southport, Northwest England, deserted now, but every summer this seaside town attracts millions of visitors. Most come to breathe in the sea air, stretch out on the miles of empty beaches and enjoy the thrills of the roller coaster. But this man is no tourist. He is psychic Joe Power, and he's been drawn here by a missing girl and a nightmare he will never forget. The story starts here in December 1998. Lindsay Kwai is a 21-year-old wife and mother of two small children. Lindsay was a very kind person, do anything for anybody, good mother. The Kwais are just an average family preparing for the holidays, but on Christmas Day 1998, their lives change forever when Lindsay mysteriously vanishes. Days turn into weeks, and weeks turn into months, and still nobody hears from Lindsay. Her family begin to suspect that something is very wrong. You know, anyone goes missing in your family, it's, it's, it's just undescribable, the feelings you get. Everyone was worrying, and our brains were going, swearing we weren't sleeping, we weren't eating. It was just a great worry. In February, Southport police take a statement from Lindsay's distraught husband, Mitchell. He said that she'd gone out drinking with her friends and that she'd stayed out all night and he'd been left alone with the two children in the house and had woken with them on his own on Christmas Day and went on to say that um, <clears throat> Lindsay had arrived later on the Christmas morning, still under the influence of drink, uh, went into a shower, didn't say anything, got a few clothes together and then left without saying anything to the children. Sometime in the January, he'd seen her in a vehicle with a guy who he didn't know um, at a junction in Southport somewhere, and he presumed that she'd just started a new life. Since then, nobody has seen or heard from Lindsay. Police class her as a missing person, and working with her husband, Mitchell, start a high-profile nationwide appeal for her return. We had a press conference, which he attended, and uh, he reiterated the story that he'd given to the police. When she came in in the morning, she was out of her face. Um, she came in at 7 o'clock in the morning. Um, she went straight up to bed and I got the kids up then, opened the presents up. She showed no kind of interest in the kids on Christmas Day. We'd had trouble in our relationship and uh, we decided to separate before Christmas. Um, but we were going to stay together through Christmas. I thought I was going to leave after New Year, but she's, she's up and left before then. Lindsay's father, Peter Wilson, makes an appeal to his daughter. I just say, you know, if Lindsay's watching this, uh, no one's blaming her what she's, for what she's done, you know, leaving the children. And we'd like to contact the police as soon as possible. Psychic Joe Power has been following the case in the press, but late one night in February, he has a nightmare that he thinks is a message from the spirit world. I'd gone to sleep, it was like any ordinary night. During my sleep, I heard a phone ring and two people appeared to me. Joe recognizes the woman from the newspapers as housewife Lindsay Kwai, but police think she is a missing person. Joe claims that the spirit of Lindsay is trying to tell him she's been murdered, who her killer is, and where to find her body. Lindsay Kwai told me she had been carnaged and mangled. Joe's vision is incredibly violent and shocks him to this day. And then she told me for the police to search the railway and also as well, the police must search the fairgrounds. But why did Lindsay want these two areas searched? As the images intensify, Joe receives more information. 
I heard McDowell's and I actually seen McDowell's. So I was, I was hearing it and I was seeing it. And I also um, heard her say tractors. Joe is confused and distressed by his vision. He turns to friend, retired police support worker, Frida Valentine, for advice. He started telling me that he'd been visited by Lindsay Kwai in a dream, and she said, please help me. I am desperate for some, um, somebody to recognize that I have been murdered. Um, I am not a missing person. Frida is shocked by what Joe tells her. I think he really believed that she had been cut up with him saying about the mangled carnage. It more or less looked as though they couldn't see or recognize any parts of the body. Joe also tells Frida where he thinks Lindsay might be buried. He told me that um, he'd been shown the railway track and also the fairground in Southport. I suggested to uh, Joe that he go to the police and give all this information. Reluctantly, Joe follows Frida's advice. I was absolutely terrified um, going into a police station. I thought they would think I was the murderer going in with so much detailed and accurate information. But no detectives from the missing persons inquiry team is available, so Joe gives a full statement to another officer. And she reassured me that that information would be passed on to the officers in charge. If information comes in from a psychic or a medium that we feel can be corroborated or will send us in a certain direction, then my view is that we will always utilize that if it helps us. But the problem with that is that quite often it's not supported by any uh, tangible evidence. Joe never hears back from the police regarding his statement. As far as they're concerned, this is still a missing persons case. Well, it was very frustrating to me because at that time I knew this was a murder case and not a missing persons. Joe is determined to discover more about Lindsay Kwai's mysterious disappearance. Has she been killed? Was she buried in the fairground or the railway? And could Joe convince the police Lindsay is not a missing person and a killer is walking free? A young mother, Lindsay Kwai, has gone missing. Police have no clue to her whereabouts. Her husband has appealed for her safe return, but in a terrifying vision, psychic Joe Power sees a woman being killed and dismembered. Is this Lindsay? Should police be hunting a murderer? Joe is determined to find out. I felt I had to investigate this case myself because the police were not listening, and I felt I had a sense of duty to get this young lady's remains found. Joe drives to Southport, he has no map and he doesn't know the area. All he has is his confusing list of locations from Lindsay. The railway, the fairground, McDowell's and a tractor yard. After hours in the car, Joe is tired and lost. He's convinced his psychic connection to Lindsay has failed until he reaches a certain road completely by chance. It was just around this part here that I heard a voice crystal clear and a sudden Noi shouted, stop. And I turned to the right, pulled up the car, and for no apparent reason at all is that the car horn started to go off. I got out of the car, pulled the bonnet, eventually it went off. And I got back in the car, and I decided, with the car horn going off, that I'd get away from the area because of the neighbours and the sound, and I felt really quite frightened at that stage. And I drove around on the next street. But just before I'd actually got to the bottom of the road, there was a place called McDowell's. That was on the left-hand side, and on the right-hand side was another place full of tractors. That's when it all sunk into me, that this is where she had actually sent me both the tractor yard and McDowell's are on Stamford Road, the very road where Lindsay lived with husband Mitchell and her two children. Joe is now convinced that the woman who appeared to him was Lindsay Kwai. But why is she drawing him here? After I left the area, I felt shocked, I felt disturbed, but I also felt, it's strange to say this, is reassurance in the images that I had actually received. 
once again, Joe decides to contact the police. This time, he writes a letter to the head of the missing person investigation, Bob Marsden. I wrote to Bob Marsden and told him that I was no ordinary person. I was doing this because this young lady had appeared to me, and this case needs to be looked at in more detail. Joe receives this receipt for his letter, but the police do not call. I believe Joe was getting very, very frustrated because he'd informed all the police, and yet they still believed that she was actually missing. Sometime after Joe's letter arrived at Southport Police Headquarters, a review of the missing person's inquiry is ordered. Detective Superintendent Jeff Sloan is brought in to re-examine all the evidence. Immediately, his instincts as a police officer tell him something is not right. There was a lot of circumstantial evidence which tended towards the fact that um, Lindsay was not alive. We, we couldn't establish any proof of life. Lindsay hasn't used her bank account since before Christmas. She hasn't applied for income support or housing benefit. Vital medical appointments have been missed, and she has had no contact with her family, not the actions of either a runaway or a loving mother. When I read through the documents and I read through the lifestyle and some of the issues that um, emanated from that missing from home inquiry, I formed the opinion quite quickly that um, this actually should be a murder inquiry. I felt that Lindsay had been murdered. Joe Power is no longer alone in his belief that Lindsay has been killed. It's very frustrating, you know, knowing that this young lady had been cornered to the mangles and you have to sit there and wait for her to be found. Detective Superintendent Jeff Sloan is placed in charge of the new murder inquiry, but this isn't going to be an easy case to crack. It's very frustrating not to have a body because um, when you have a body, that's where your lines of inquiry start to develop. All we had was 22 Stamford Road, which was Lindsay's home address, where she'd lived with Mitchell. Well, the very first thing that we do is to go back and fully search the house again and the, the gardens and the area surround, immediately surrounding the house. Using the house as their starting point, the police begin one of the largest searches ever conducted in mainland England. And we actually used officers from the Royal Air Force, the JARIC, which is a reconnaissance organisation, who flew over um, and could detect any recently disturbed ground. And if they highlighted any areas, then we would send a specialist search team to go and excavate. It's an agonizing time for Lindsay's family. We're by the phone 24 seven, and sometimes we get false information where the bones had been found at one time. And uh, we were given the information, then we found out it was a pig, a dead pig. And then when you heard about a body being found and this, that, and the other, one was found in the River Ribble, I think, you wondered if that was Lindsay. It's never ending. But the police failed to find any evidence of Lindsay. I was concerned that we hadn't found a body and I was at a loss as to where we would look to next and, and took the decision that we wouldn't undertake any more searches or digging until it was based on intelligence that we had through. But it was, was frustrating for me. The police are forced to suspend all searches, but Lindsay's parents refuse to give up hope. They spend every waking moment looking for their daughter. Well, we searched in canals, rivers, we got stung by bees, hornets, you name it. But, uh, you know, I used to be able to be next sometimes in freezing cold water. We couldn't stop, it was just our way of contributing towards finding Lindsay. With the police search on hold and no new information coming forward, it looks as if Lindsay's body may never be found and the case remain unsolved. But psychic Joe Power believes this is something the spirit world would never allow. Joe thinks Lindsay's spirit is unable to rest, as once again she appears to him with a message from beyond the grave. The second time Lindsay appeared to me was at my home address, and she came to me and told me that the police were not listening to the information that I had previously provided to them. Joe's first vision led him to Lindsay's house. Now he returns to Southport to search the fairground and railway track. He has a feeling that these areas are in some way connected to her disappearance. He starts at the railway track. Joe doesn't know what he should be looking for. He's hoping his psychic powers will be his guide. When I walked 
along this particular part of the railway line. My hair stood up on my hand and I heard a voice, I believe that was Lindsay, telling me is that she was in this location. But if Lindsay is buried at the railway, why does Joe want the police to search the fairground as well? It was quite clear to me is that this young lady's remains were in two separate locations. But Joe Power fails to find any evidence that Lindsay is in this location. For Detective Superintendent Sloan, the case is equally baffling. With no new leads coming in, he decides to re-examine the original witness testimonies. He wants to build a picture of Lindsay's last known movements. We believe Lindsay had been shopping on the 15th of December and had actually made a call to the benefits agency and she made an inquiry about a missing cheque uh, which should have been issued in the November. Uh, as a result of that conversation, she was sent out a disclaimer form uh, which was never ever received and never ever recovered by the police. Uh, it was after that phone call, basically, that uh, Lindsay ceased to exist. Detective Superintendent Sloan discovers that the only person who claims to have seen Lindsay alive after December 16th was her husband, Mitchell Kwai. He told police she left him and abandoned her children on Christmas Day. Detective Superintendent Sloan is suspicious. He has a feeling Mitchell's statement doesn't ring true. It doesn't fit with the profile he has built of Lindsay. Given the background of Lindsay, what, what her upbringing was, the way she was uh, interacted with her children, that there was no way um, she would have walked out on her children on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. Police take a closer look at Lindsay and Mitchell's relationship. Mitchell was very violent towards Lindsay over a number of years, and ultimately she did try to um, institute divorce proceedings from him. But the, the issue was then that she'd always accepted Mitchell back and they'd always be reconciled. Could Mitchell really be her killer? Was this why Lindsay's spirit led Joe to her road? Was she trying to tell him that this was the murder scene? It's been nine months since Lindsay Kwai disappeared in Southport, Northwest England. Detective Superintendent Jeff Sloan believes that Lindsay has been murdered, just as psychic Joe Power said over seven months earlier. Joe's nightmarish vision had started a psychic investigation that took him to Southport Fairground, the railway track, and Lindsay's own home. But what significance did these locations have? All is to be revealed as police close in on their prime suspect, Lindsay's husband, Mitchell Kwai. Well, Mitchell portrayed an image of he was the abandoned father, the abandoned hu husband, and that um, Sadly for us, he, he was very plausible in front of the media. Uh, he was very confident, overconfident sometimes. He seemed to be reaching out to the community and a lot of people seemed to be believing him and formed the opinion that perhaps the police were just picking him out because he seemed the obvious uh, candidate for, for a suspect. In June 2000, Detective Superintendent Jeff Sloan trusts his instincts and arrests Mitchell Kwai on suspicion of murdering his 21-year-old wife, Lindsay. Well, Mitchell was an egotist, and I actually felt that he formed the opinion that he could get away with this because of the time element and the fact that um, the media had shown such an interest in him and various members of the community were sympathetic to him. But despite hours of questioning, Mitchell refuses to crack. Detective Superintendent Sloan is convinced that he has his man, but he doesn't have enough evidence to press charges. It looks like Mitchell is about to walk. Basically stuck to his story, um, but when we listened to the interviews, his responses and his replies, I got from the psychologist that we were starting really to get to him and he was becoming quite low and down in this. And I think the telling point came when I gave instructions within his hearing that his father was to be charged and so was his brother. Phone records show that at key points in the investigation, Mitchell made an unusually large number of calls to his brother Elliot and his father. This was totally out of character, and Detective Superintendent Sloan thought it pointed to their involvement. The arrest of Elliot and the subsequent arrest of Mitchell's father had quite a, a pronounced impact on Mitchell because I think he felt that um, he'd actually succeeded in convincing uh, members of the public, the press, and to a certain degree the police, that uh, he was right and that, that Lindsay had just disappeared. He thought it would go away. And I, I got the impression that when he realised that we did mean business and that they too had been arrested, that reality started to creep in. And the realisation was that he wasn't going to get away with it. 
I made the decision that I was going to charge Mitchell with murder. And within a very, very short space of time, I was contacted on my mobile to tell me that Mitchell had actually admitted that he had, in fact, killed Lindsay. Over a year after Lindsay Kwai first went missing, the truth surrounding her disappearance is finally uncovered. The last few hours of Lindsay's life all centered around the check that had gone missing in November. Mitchell, at some stage, um, tried to encash that check. There's a row developed over that, and he's lost his control, and he strangled her. As Mitchell's confession continues, the true horrific nature of the crime is revealed. And that's when he recruited Elliot to come in and to help him to dispose of the body. And that's when he, he decided that um, he and Elliot would cut the body up in the bath with the children asleep in bed in the next room, which I thought, thought was horrific. The images of violence in Joe's dream were now explained. Lindsay was dismembered, just as Joe had said. And the scene of the crime? Lindsay's house on Stamford Road, the very place Joe had been led to 12 months earlier. How did he know these facts? I knew 100% I'd been right all the time. It was a very emotional case and a very upsetting case. Mitchell Kwai leads police officers to the locations where he buried his wife's remains. Lindsay's torso was found near to the Pleasureland theme park at Southport behind a go-kart uh, racing track where Mitchell used to work. We found Lindsay's legs on the railway embankment, which was near to one of the first places they, they resided together. Joe had asked for these locations to be searched over 12 months earlier. I, I knew straight away. It, it didn't come as a surprise for me. You, what you've got to remember is how powerful these images were she had shown to me. She'd already shown me the fairground. She'd shown me the railway. But unfortunately for Joe, at that time, he was working alone. He never did receive the call to help the police. But Joe believes there is one person who recognizes the part he played in this case. Lindsay briefly appeared to me after her remains were actually found, and I heard her say thank you, and there was no more contact from this young lady. On January 16, 2001, Mitchell Kwai is sentenced. Mitchell was sentenced to a mandatory life uh, term of imprisonment um, with a tariff of 18 years because of the severity of the way he disposed of his wife, Lindsay. Elliot Kwai receives seven years for his part in the gruesome murder. Mitchell's father is released without charge. This case was extremely difficult to crack, um, not least because of the way that she was um, murdered, the way she was disposed of, and the way that he behaved after the murder, actually actively seeking the press and seeking public opinion on his side and sympathy. Detective Superintendent Sloan receives a special commendation for the integral part he played in the capture and conviction of this most devious of killers. Joe Power's personal investigation is as yet unrecognized. When the killers were caught, I was very satisfied that I'd done my job. All the detail and all the information that had been provided made me feel very, very satisfied, not only just for me, but for, the, for Lindsay Quay's parents as well. It was a very emotional case and a very upsetting case. To lose Lindsay that way has affected everybody, the whole family me included, never going to be the same again. Still suffering now, we'll just be suffering until the day we die. Peter, my eldest son, uh, hung himself in the loft at my house. Could never get over the fact of what they did to Lindsay after they'd murdered her. That's what led to his suicide. Two years after her vicious murder, Lindsay is finally able to rest in peace. but she leaves behind a family torn apart by tragedy. Mitchell's taken my daughter. He's taken Robin and, and Jack's mother. He's taken my son, Peter, because I blame him for that as well. He's taken a lot of the family, which we'll never forgive him for. <laughs> 